Welcome, Pewter Report readers, listeners, and viewers to another edition of the Pewter Report podcast, energized by Celsius. I'm John Ledyard from PewterReport.com. Scott Reynolds is with me today, also of PewterReport.com. And Scott, we've got a Bucks washington football team game to break down today. We've got injuries that were known that we need to break down today and injuries that we're unknown that we need to break uh, down today. So there's a lot of ground to cover yes. on this show as it feels like there always is with the Bucs. There's new yes. signings to talk about as well. It's a, it's a, it's a busy show. bye week, was it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No rest at all. And the Bucs have really not chilled out for the last couple of years. <laughs> as soon as you think right. there's a dead period. Like last night, I was like, you know what? It's Tuesday. The play, No media availability. Going out with the family. I'm yeah. having dinner. And boom, they're signing people. They're signing Rashad Perryman. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Darren so, Fells comes yeah, on board Darren today, Fels, the tight end. Yeah, yeah it's, there's there's a, a lot happening in Tampa Bay. Yeah, and and yeah. thank God there's there's Bucks football, right? I mean, right. Um, I kind of missed. I mean, I, I enjoyed the bye week, but also I, I missed watching meaningful football. It was fun to see the stars align. I think everybody but Arizona helped Tampa Bay, so. That yeah, was pretty was, cool. Right. And we talked about that at length too on yep. Monday's podcast because you're exactly right. It was kind of a winning bye week for the Bucs. And we went into great detail about that, Andre. I'm addicted to Peter Report. Appreciate it, Andre. Thank you. Uh, we're addicted to bringing y'all the good content. So That's hopefully right. you enjoyed Monday's right. show and we'll enjoy today's as well. And of course, it's all brought to you by our friends over at Celsius. I'm rocking the peach vibe today, the sparkling white peach edition. No sugar in these things, Scott. Yet the taste is unbelievable. Yes. Truly the best energy drink out there. It gives you the boost and it gives you it in the form of a great tasting beverage and you don't get the crash. You don't get the sugar. And so it's great stuff from Celsius. You can find it by clicking the banner report or banner ads over at pewterreport.com. Um, or you can go to Celsius.com, use the store locator, find out where they are near you or by using Amazon. Do the subscribe and save option. Get these puppies coming to your door every week, every other week, every month, whatever you need to get by. Celsius has you covered. So check those things out. You can see some of the wonderful flavors there. All right, Scott, the surprise injury today, Chris Godwin added to the injury report with a foot injury. Of whence we do not know where it came, Scott. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't know when the injury occurred. We don't know how the injury re- re- occurred. And uh, we don't know whether he's a candidate for injured reserve or not. Those are three things I would have liked to know. And we did not know those coming out of his media availability. So we are yeah. in the dark. A little in the dark. Yeah. 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 So we'll see what happens. But this week he said he's, he doesn't know. He was un- he was non-committal. Maybe he knows and he wouldn't say, but we don't know. Right. Yeah, in the words of Billy Squire, in the dark. And what that means is, is if Chris Godwin were not to play, and we know that Antonio Brown is not going to play. I mean, yeah, that, that's pretty much a given. So without those two, it's Mike Evans and everybody else, right? Well, yeah, it's I think it's Tyler Johnson in the slot, John, replacing Chris Godwin because that's kind of Tyler Johnson's natural role. He's a bigger receiver. He can get in there and block a little bit. He can work the middle of the field as well as play some outside. But then, John, you might be looking at Brashad Perryman mm-hmm. as the number three receiver because that was his role back in 2019. And, and all of a sudden, with hamstring injuries to Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Scotty Miller at the end of the season, Brashad Perryman elevated to number one and actually ended the 2019 season with three 100-yard games, made an incredible catch in the back of the end zone for a touchdown against the Falcons. Yeah. And and really looked the part, at least for a brief period of time, like he was a number one wide receiver. The Jets that tried to five game that. tear he was on was oh, unbelievable. He, yes. he had like five touchdowns in the last five weeks of the season, 70, 80, and then three hundred yard games. It was amazing tear. I mean, yeah. Yeah, honestly, I was thinking about it just laughing. Obviously, there's no comparison in terms of who's better, but I was like, that's even a better five game tear than Antonio Brown's even had at any point uh, since he joined the box. Yeah, it's kind of uh, crazy. To obviously, think. you know, Brown's played with Godwin and Evans, and, and he, and those games, a lot of those games, neither of them yeah. were available. Um, so Perryman had his opportunity to shine, but we should say since then, Perryman has things have not gone well. He went to the Jets as right. a free agent, it was kind of a cheap deal. He went there on a one year, it did not work out. He hit free agency. At after disappointing in New York, he was on the Lions. That's the worst receiving core in the league. Surely yeah. he'll make it there. Nope, didn't make it on the Lions team. Got caught. Then Bears. His dad was up. a good Lions receiver. Dad was a good Lion. <laughs> yeah, it was just like this got to work, right? Like even just yeah. keep them. Look at their wide receiver core. It's like Quintez right. Cephas and ten dudes you never heard. You know, it's got they just keep them for the familiar family aspect of it. Nope, he got caught. Bears picked him up. Couldn't get active for a game with the Bears. That's not exactly the best 
uh, wide receiver room in the league either. So right. it's Prashad Perryman season again, as Vortex says, back yeah. in Tampa Bay after he uh, cleared waivers. He's back with the Bucks. I think Perryman, if now here's the situation with the Bucks receiving court. Chris Godwin, question mark. Antonio Brown's probably out this week. Scotty Miller, question mark. Yeah. Mike Evans is playing. Tyler Johnson's playing as of now. Let's see right. if anything happens before Sunday. But the wide receiver core is hurting. I don't think Jalen Darden's ready to be like a top three guy for a team that runs right. three and throws runs through receivers and throws the ball as much as this team does. So I think Scotty will play. I don't have any idea about Godwin, but Scotty's not going to play hunt like even a hundred percent of the wide receiver three snaps. So correct. He would I think he splits with Perryman, and I think Perryman plays yeah. a good bit if Godwin's out this week. Yeah, and the thing about about Perryman is is he really was awful the first half of the 2019 season. I even said they should trade him right at the yep. trading deadline, but they really needed him at the end of the season. And he's a player, John, that he looks the part. He's six two, about two ten, two fifteen. He's he's a big bodied receiver. He's got speed. He can separate. His hands are questionable. I think it's been a confidence issue really since he was a first round pick coming out of UCF. Now, this is a Florida guy through and through. His dad, Brad Perriman's from the Miami area, was born in Florida, went to UCF, obviously played for the Buccaneers during the 2019 season. And I remember talking to him in the locker room back in the day when you can go in the locker room before all this COVID BS. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it was a thing where he he really, really liked playing. Right. in the state of Florida. He felt like this was home. It just gave him like a little boost of confidence, and you saw that at the end of the season. So I, I do think that if, if anybody can come in and play right away, it's, it's him. He knows the system. Um, Bruce Arians indicated today that that you know he was in good enough shape where he could play. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I agree, John. I think that he and Scotty Miller would split time at that out, outside receiver spot opposite Mike Evans. Right. And it does sound like some people asking questions. Callie Bucks, yes, Chris Godwin, foot injury, did not practice today. We'll see for Sunday. Bruce Arians did not know. He just said, we'll have to wait and see. Antonio Brown probably out this week. Could be out another week or two, maybe. Hard to say at this point. I don't know if the Bucks even know, to be honest. Uh, he was seen out of the walking boot today. Matt had some good pictures of him down at practice out of the walking boot today. So that was right. a good sign. But yeah, question mark there with him, it seems like, um, it, it, at least for the near future i mean i do think antonio brown some people have asked i think he'll be back for december you know arians had some interesting comments today scott and i really think it's not that he's disrespecting the opponents ahead of them on the schedule right he knows this he he fully believes if, if tom brady isn't injured this bucks team is going to make the playoffs yeah. and i don't think he cares whether they're the i don't think he cares that much whether they're the one seed or not i think he thought saw last year they can go and, and beat anybody this year he looks around the league and he says we can beat anybody i think he wants people 100% for the stretch run. I think he wants AB 100%, yeah. Gronk 100%, Chris Godwin 100% of that's what it takes, Scotty Miller 100%. I think he'd go out there with Perryman and Tyler Johnson along with Mike Evans and feel like they could win the game against Washington no matter what mm-hmm. the final score was. I don't think he'd care. I think it's all about getting to December and January and playing your best football those two months. That's why I think his focus yeah. is so – I don't think we'll see I, – it wouldn't surprise me if we didn't see Gronk or AB back until, what, the, the Falcons game, the fifth? Yeah. Maybe the end of November against the Colts. Yeah. 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 I mean, and and that that's kind of my, you know, the 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 impetus for my column yesterday, John, about Jason Pierre Paul. Right. I mean, do you need Jason Pierre Paul against Washington, the Giants, and the Colts? Or do you need him against the likes of the Rams, the Packers, whoever the Dallas, you know, whoever else you're gonna play in the playoffs? That's where you need the guy. And, And listen, that rotator, torn rotator cuff is not going to heal itself. I think what you're going to see from JPP the rest of the year is he's not going to practice and he'll play on Sundays. And that's yeah. fine. If you want to play him on Sunday, risk risk him getting that shoulder so messed up that he literally can't go, he'll have to go in IR and miss the playoffs. Mm-hmm. That's a calculated risk that Todd Bowles and Bruce Arians are going to make. I would sit the guy for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I then mean, I would play it, him in December and get him ready for the playoffs. I would sit him these next three games and and get Joe Tryon Shoinka in there to get some of that, that needed experience. And I don't think you're going to lose a whole bunch. Or at least if you're going to play him, John, at least split the reps 50-50. Because actually, Jason Pierre-Paul, when his, when he was playing 50-50 snaps in, in the only game out of these four that he's played in since he returned, that was the Bears game. And part of that, sure, it was – because the score was 38 to three, but that's the game where he was the most effective. He played yeah. fewer snaps, was more effective, two sacks and a forced fumble. 
And I think he had three or four tackles in that game. And mm-hmm. and Joe Tryon showing up had a tackle. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I just like to see more JTS. Especially rushing the passer. Like he just has yeah. not been able to get in a rhythm. It's so big for a young player. You he's not right. used to these matchups. He hasn't played Andrew Whitworth a hundred times or some of these exactly. guys. So he needs the yeah. reps to feel out the opponent and figure right. out what works in terms of moves and right. And he as, good as, that. as good as JPP was against the Bears in, in getting a couple of sacks, that club on the hand is a hindrance. He can't right. really wrap up. So yeah. I I just I'd like to see that part of, of the injury discussion. Um, since I wrote about yesterday, I'd like to see more JTS, a little bit less of JPP. Right, for sure. Hey, we'd be remiss if we didn't shout out our friends over at Pin Chasers. You could see the locations there on the screen, but this is uh, Pin Chasers. The Peter Board Bowling League is tonight at 630 down at Pin That's Chasers right. on Armenia Avenue. This is the place to be. And if you're if you're in a league, great, and you're going down tonight, awesome. If you're not, go ahead down anyway. They'll get That's you right. in somewhere, and they'll get you some a team to play on. Let Matt know, Matt at PewterReport.com. Just shoot him a quick email. Say, hey, I'm coming down tonight uh, for some bowling down on Armenia Avenue. But Pewter, Pin Chasers just in general, visit PinChasers.net. Bowling, food, fun, great place to take the family. They got an all-you-can-eat pizza night. They got all kinds of awesome stuff. John, the pizza is outstanding. Like it, I, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, next week, so I can't I'm wait just, to try it. I'm telling you, it's like like you think bowling alley food, not good. No, this is actually – I'm not saying it's gourmet. I'm not going to say this is like the burns of bowling or anything, but, I mean, right. the food is really good. I've had a lot of things in the menu, and it the food is better than you expect. So yeah. definitely go there, have dinner, bowl, and have some fun. Yeah, for sure. Next week, I know I'd said it might be this week, but it's actually going to be next week. I'm at least going down. Maybe Britt is going to come with me. Maybe the kids will even come with me. So if it's you're fun. a Bucks fan, a Pew Report fan, and we'd love to say hi to you next week. But get down there and check it out uh, tonight, too. They're having a blast down there. And, of course, we would be remiss also if we didn't talk about our friends over at livinggolflife.com where they've got unbelievable apparel going up right now. Look at these hats. This hat's one of my favorite hats out there. And then the polos, you always hear Matt talk about how comfortable they are. He wears them out on the course. So if you're getting out, doing some golfing to finish up the bye week, enjoy it because livinggolflife.com has got a lot of the the best stuff you can wear out there on the course. They're about golf being a lifestyle. They've got a great brand going. You can check out all their products, livinggolflife.com or see them pimped out at, at livinggolflife on Instagram as well. All right, Scott, we're looking into this matchup now as we get to the Washington football team and we start to take a we start to dive into kind of what this matchup looks like on paper a little bit. Like I said, we'll talk more about the injuries as we as we progress and we'll talk about some of them from the Washington perspective. But I think most people are up to uh, up to date on where the Bucks are at in terms of injuries. The reality is this, though, Scott, I do not see a team here in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that needs to be at 100% to win this game. Washington's right. defense is good as they were and we'll start we'll talk about Tampa Bay's offense against Washington's defense to start. As good as Washington's defense was last year and as much of a strength of the team as it was, it has been a shell of itself basically every yeah. single week of the and what a dis- that's one of the most disappointing units in the league this year, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And and really it kind of starts up front to a degree. The the guy was playing like gangbusters, Jonathan Allen, right? And you gotta remember yeah. the, the Washington football team, they got four first rounders on that front line. One of them's missing, Montez Sweat. He had the broken jaw, he's, he's out. Uh, but he you know, he had four sacks on the season, has four sacks on the season. He's a good bookend to Chase Young, the number one overall pick. But the problem with Chase Young is is He's playing on the left side this year, John. So he'll go up against Tristan Wirth. See, if you remember, Donovan Smith handled him. I mean, yeah. just about adopted him, right? I mean, made him right. his son yeah, in it was the playoffs bad. after he's, I want Tom Brady. Give me Tom Brady. Okay, yeah. well, like Donovan Smith said, <laughs> no, no, no Tom <laughs> yeah. Brady for you, rookie. And and really just just worked him over. So he's going to have a chance to go up against Tristan Wirfs, which <laughs> that's not going to be any better, I don't think, for, for Chase yeah. Young. But it just – he doesn't seem like he's been as productive rushing from the front side of the quarterback as opposed to the back. Mm-hmm. We'll see well, how that goes. But yeah. with Montez Sweat out, you know, they, they, they might look for some matchups. And the interesting thing is, you and I talked about this earlier today, Jonathan Allen, former first-round pick, playing really well, leads that team with six sacks. That's going to be a, a great matchup against Ali Marpet. Those guys went toe-to-toe last year in the playoffs. But with these these injuries at, at the, the defensive end spot and with the depth of tackle, John, talk about that and, and the fact that Jonathan Allen might be playing outside against Donovan Smith. Yeah, for sure. That's a possibility. I mean, they don't have a proven number three edge rusher, and Washington has always been a team 
I feel like that's had a, a, at least a third or maybe a fourth the proven edge rusher. That's not something they have. If you remember Ron Rivera from the past, you know, he has always been a, a coach that likes to build from the inside out uh, on his units. And so having four deep at defensive tackle, that's his ideal lineup, you know, and, and they are four deep at defensive tackle. I think you'll see Jonathan Allen kick out a little bit and play on the edge, obviously Chase Young on the edge as well. And then you'll see Matt Ioannidis, Tim Settle, a bunch of different guys on the inside. Mm-hmm. They're good inside. Deron Payne's another yep. option there. They've done pretty well against the run this season, uh, but they are dead last in the NFL against the pass. They're 29th in points per game allowed this year, 28.4. They're 29th in yards allowed per game at almost 390 yards allowed per game, and they are dead last against the pass, 287 yards per game. And even passing yards per attempt against them. You know, the Bucs, we know for a while they were giving up a ton of passing yards, but the yards per attempt was extremely low. The Bucs have been one of the low in terms of yards per attempt. They've been one of the lowest defenses in the league or best defense in the league, I should say. Not so with Washington, 7.9 yards per pass attempt, 28th (laughs) in the NFL. So there is basically nothing good about this team in coverage. I don't think there's a player. I think that's they only playing have well four in interceptions, John. Yeah, they're, four, and yeah, we're at the halfway point of the season. Yeah, it's. I mean, William Jackson was their high price free agent corner. He's been bad. I think yeah. he's been banged up too. Um, they really don't have anybody playing at a high level in the secondary right. after a year ago. When I feel like everybody was overachieving, they yeah. they were Scott. <laughs> they really <laughs> they were. weren't that good. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you yeah. remember, John, last year in the playoffs, now Brady did get sacked three times. One of those was not by Chase Young, but. Uh, he threw for 381 yards in a pair of touchdowns. One of those was to Antonio Brown, who they're going to miss. In that game, Brown had two catches, 49 yards, including a 36-yard touchdown. He also had a 22-yard um, end around, which helped the Bucks rush for 142 yards in that game. Mm-hmm. If you remember, that was really kind of playoff Lenny's first playoff game mm-hmm. with the Bucks. 19 carries, 93 yards, averaged 4.9 yards per carry, 17-yard long with, with a, a touchdown in the mix. So... We might see another big game from Leonard Fournette, uh, and and uh, the thing too is you you mentioned um, you know Chris Godwin perhaps not playing. Godwin did have five catches for seventy nine yards and a touchdown last year, but he also had five drops. John, that was yeah. probably one of his worst games of the season. Yeah, his, his worst game as a pro, yeah. I'm sure. Five yeah. drop games almost never happen for right. wide receivers, and one was and, a touchdown. Right, and it, we, he did have a touchdown in that game, but but he I did have his share of drops. And if you remember, the week before, Mike Evans got over a thousand yards against the Falcons in the first quarter, dropped the touchdown, hurt himself. We thought he might miss the playoffs or even maybe at least that that game he against Washington. Out. Yeah, and he went off for six catches, 119 yards. Uh, against Washington on ten targets, so yeah. um, we'll see how a, how a if 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 a gimpy Mike Evans got six catches for under nineteen yards, uh, and he's going to be the focal yeah. point in the passing game. If you're playing Mike Evans in fantasy, this might be definitely a week to feature him. Yeah, eight touchdowns already for Mike Evans yeah. this season. I would feel pretty good about him catching one in this game. The matchup yeah. just isn't a great one for Washington. Now, obviously it gets better if some of those guys are out and we'll just have to see on Chris Godwin's status as we get closer. I told you before the show, I'm surprised that I haven't gotten a tweet from somebody saying, Oh, Chris Godwin had five drops last time they played Washington. Maybe they'll right. be better without him. <laughs> that <laughs> circular weird reasoning. Um, but yeah, right. it's a big loss if they don't have him, obviously, but I think this is, should be a game where you don't necessarily need him. So if he has to rest a game, Okay, the biggest issue is communication, especially within the Bucks offense for a guy who hasn't played in it in a while and hasn't yeah. played with Brady at all and, and Brett or Brett Rashad Perryman. Um, that's going to be that's going to be a big deal because yeah. miscommunications can often lead to turnovers, and we saw that uh, we've seen that over the years with Arians and with even with Cutter's right. offense. And so, don't want that to be the case, and that's where they're going to have to be careful about how they deploy personnel. I think. Cam Brates and OJ Howard and 12 personnel is going to be in because this yeah. is a team with horrible coverage linebackers yes. and not great coverage safeties. And yes. I think they want to exploit those matchups with all the wide receiver injuries. I'm not even saying it's a bad call to go 50, 50 in terms of 11, 12 personnel. I Cam Brate had a great game against Washington last time. Uh, I think you're going to see the bucks go play action heavy that extra week to prepare Pretty much every time they've had an extra week, they've gone play action happy, right? Or an extra yeah. couple of days, or you know, they were already in the playoffs when they played Atlanta last year in the regular. So they looked ahead to that Washington game, I'm sure right. some, and they said, okay, play action. You know, they went play action heavy in that game. Had the extra week before the Super Bowl, went play action heavy in that mm-hmm. game, and so 
I think you're going to see them come out, go play action heavy, try to run the football, yeah, throw the ball over the middle of the field a ton in this game. Uh, Definitely and agree. I think that, you know, you'll have to see what happens. Yeah, and and, and the thing too, John is is, uh, and I agree with Michael Henderson. I'm waiting for that 30 plus point game on the road too. On right, the road, that, yeah. that was successful for the Bucks last year. It happened in Atlanta. I mean, it had to right. They were down 17 nothing at halftime, and won that game 31 17. They did that 47 to seven in Detroit. And then, of course, at Washington, they they beat the the football team thirty one twenty three, and uh, and I, I think because John, I agree with you, they are going to come out running the ball. I I think this could be a, a big game for Lenny, and when they do pass, it could be some play action shots to to Mike, and they're also yep. going to hit Tyler Johnson down the middle of the field, maybe OJ Howard as well. But I I don't know that that they're going to be putting the pedal to the metal, trying to get 30 points. I mean, they want to, but I, I just think that that this is not going to be an air raid type of game where they're going to light up the scoreboard. I think that they'll win, but this might be a 28-17 type game, 24-14 type game. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see a lot of explosiveness from the Washington yeah. offense, which we'll talk about. I don't know. It does depend a little bit on who's out, but – it's hard for me to look at Washington and say, yeah, I think the Bucs are going to come under that 28 points per game that Washington's given up so far this season. I mean, some of the teams Washington's played haven't even been really good football teams, and they've put up points on them. Like, yeah. they, they gave up 30 to the Giants. You know, they gave up 30 to the Falcons. You know, they gave right. up 33 to the Saints. That was the only game the Saints really scored in was yeah. that game. Or, sorry, yeah, 33 to the Saints. Right. The Chiefs offense has been done nothing. I know it's Mahomes, but they have – not been good this year right. in terms of points per game anyway, and they gave up 31 to the Chiefs. And so it's yeah. like, man, the Bucks right now, they're first in points per game, 32.5. They're third in yards per game, 423. They're yeah. first in passing yards per game. They are second in the NFL in third downs against the worst third down defense in the league by a mile. By How a bad mile. are they, John, on third <laughs> they down? They are 57% on third down. There's not even a wow. team – there's not even another team in the 50, Scott. Like this is Washington is literally just set up shop on third down. Yeah, you know, sucking on third down real estate. Like it's, it's almost like like an old Lovey Smith Bucks defense, <laughs> right? Where brutal. it's like it's third and seven. We're going to give you the eight yard slant. Just yeah, gonna take that, it. that's. Go I mean, it's it's right there. It's for without you. resistance right now for them. They just aren't. I mean, yards per play, they're 26 yeah. NFL defensively. The only thing defensively that they've done well is limit yards after catch, which I think is just because so many balls get completed down the field on them. That right. It's like, that's not a big yak area. I, I am just not sure what they're like they're, right now, this defense, and now they don't have sweat and some other guys are banged up and you know, right. Bostick's out, I believe. And so now it's, uh, you know, the linebacker group is already one of the league's worst. Even without Godwin, I still feel like this might be a safe one to bet on the Bucks getting to 30 because the flip side of it, which we'll talk about in a second, is that, Washington's offense puts the ball in harm's way a lot. And that could be a factor in terms of points in this game as well. So you're right though. It might not be a game where they come out and throw 50 times. Um, I just think it's so hard for Washington's defense to get off the field and it is. And, and even against bad offenses. So the bucks would really have to play bad. I think to not have at least four touchdowns in this game. Well, yeah. And, and also too, um, I, I think you're going to see some turnovers from, from Tyler Heineke as well, because they're going to be behind in this game that that's going to force them to press a little bit. And I think the bucks yeah. might get a couple additional scoring opportunities because of some takeaways. Uh, the bucks have been pretty opportunistic, especially with some interceptions this year. They're, they're in the top five in the league in picks right now. If you look at the, at the line, it's Tampa Bay minus 10 against the Washington football team on my bookie. And folks, I'm going to put some money down on that mm. line on Tampa Bay. The reason I'm going to do that is, is because of my bookie, it's just the, the best place to bet. Not only have they been an advertising partner with Peter Report for the last four years, I've been in my bookie patron for the last four years as well. More is always better. That's why my bookie instantly doubles all first time deposits. Listen, the great thing about my bookie is you don't have to get in at the start of the season. You might, might be thinking, well, the season's halfway over. I'll just do it next year. No, you can start this week with college, with pro, with NHL, all of the different sports that are going on right now, NBA. With double your funds, you can double your action, and more importantly, double your wins. Getting in on the action has never been easier. I can bet with all my favorite currencies, including cryptocurrency on my bookie. With all that extra scratch, why not get in on the biggest matchup of the week at my bookie? 
as we inch closer to the playoffs, there are some pivotal games to be on the lookout for this weekend, including a showdown between the division rivals out of West when the San Francisco 49ers take on the Los Angeles Rams. Behind MVP candidate Matt Stafford, the Rams are looking to continue rolling as they take on a pretty good 49ers defense. The Rams are legit. Bet them to cover the spread. Don't wait. Head to my bookie today to redeem your double deposit bonus. You can so you can get in on the game, start winning now. Use the promo code Pewter to receive double your first deposit instantly. That's promo code Pewter. Mm-hmm. So you can double your funds, double your winnings. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Yeah, Scott, there's not really, you know, as you look across this game, it's like, man, I don't really see a lot of paths for Washington to be successful. Uh, when they're when the Bucks have the football, unless the Bucks, you know, do things to beat themselves. Right now, defensively, right. like I said, the only thing Washington's doing kind of okay is they're kind of limiting the run game a little bit. But I, I, a part of that is just because everybody's throwing on them so much. I mean, this is a team that's, like I said, last in the NFL in passing yards, so they're getting thrown on a ton. And uh, I think, yeah, they right now are floundering and kind of looking for answers. Should note they've played a little bit better in recent weeks, and so that is something to yeah. be aware of with them going except into the for the bye points week. they're scoring i mean they, they scored That's 13 the points against kansas city they lost 31 13 they scored 10 points against green yeah. bay lost 24 right. 10 they lost out of denver last week before the bye week 17 to 10 so yeah. they, they really got to work on their offense because uh, they scored 30 points i'm sorry 34 mm-hmm. points in a win a 34 30 shootout at atlanta Yep. And the point totals have just decreased 34, 22, 13, 10, 10. So this this offense in Washington, and it's interesting because not only do the Bucks have a bye week, but also, too, John, Washington has a bye week. It's rare that you have two teams yep. coming off the bye at the same time, but they really got to figure something out. Heineke is completing 64% of his passes, almost at 2,000 yards. He's averaging 270 yards per game, but so many of those are checkdowns. And as you mm-hmm. said, he's got a pinch for turning the ball over. 11 uh, touchdowns by nine interceptions. And if you look at the the leading receiver for the Washington football team, Terry McLaurin, right? That's no mm-hmm. surprise. 43 right. catches, 573 yards, four touchdowns. He's having a, a pretty good game. And this is a game, John, where you probably wish that you had Carlton Davis to really mm-hmm. kind of blanket McLaurin because he can't hurt you. Yeah, for but, sure. But the, the running backs on this Washington football team really, uh, I would say that, the, that over the last couple of weeks, Heineke has been a check down Charlie. He just mm-hmm. has. J.D. Yeah. McKissick, the running back, 33 catches. He's the second leading receiver, 332 yards and a touchdown. Now, the thing is, he's averaging 10 yards a catch. But a lot of times what they like to do with the Washington offense is send those receivers deep. And and for, for teams that are playing man coverage, and you might see me that see some of that by Tampa Bay. I think they're going to play a little bit more zone because of the the fact that that they like to check the ball down so much. Um, that's where McKissick and Antonio Gibson have really flourished as, as pass yeah. catchers. Uh, and and they've got another guy too. He's not really dynamic. He's he's familiar to the Tampa Bay crowd though. Adam Humphreys. Mm-hmm. He is their their second leading wide receiver behind McLaurin and also McKissick, the running back. But Humphreys yeah. averaging 11 yards per catch. He's a chain mover, nothing more. But um, they just don't have a lot of, of guys that that really scare you in the passing game. Logan Thomas had a great year last year, John. He has mm-hmm. been a shell of his former self and hurt this year. 12 catches, 117 yards, and two touchdowns. Right. Yeah, they just they don't really have – enough on offense it's McLaurin and then just a bunch of guys right now yeah Gibson's at a moment here or there obviously the Bucks loved him coming out you know Arians has said that would have been the guy they t- picked if they didn't take Antoine Winfield great pick by the Bucks, by the way yes. because <laughs> Gibson's been fine but there's nothing there to indicate that he's yeah. even been worth the third round I know you and I liked him too so I'm, yeah and you know, I'm not blaming Washington but um he's not developed into an every down guy which obviously if you take a running back in the top 100 you want that to be the case so they have not yeah they haven't figured this thing out for sure right uh, in any phase on offense and yeah you mentioned it they've gotten worse on offense as the defense has gotten maybe incrementally better yeah um their offense's production has gone completely downhill ryan fitzpatrick another kind of uh mri results today i guess is making progress but not where he needs to be to play i I doubt we'll see him play this year yeah. at this rate. It just doesn't seem to make any sense. And then we'll see what he wants to do with his career after this season, obviously. So, yeah, it is Heineke, and he's tricky 
because he's not good, Scott, but he's one of those guys. You know the type I'm talking about yes. over the years. Fitzpatrick's probably the best version of, of the type yeah. of quarterback Heineke is, honestly. Right. The guy that can come out and just because he doesn't care and he ain't scared right. can get in a hot streak and yes. start just slinging it. You know, And we saw it in that playoff game. Yeah, he's a and scrappy guy. It, yeah, a few times this year mm-hmm. we've seen it like where he's made some – the Giants game where they did win – that was on Thursday night, and he made some great throws in that game. Overall, this season, it's been yeah, it's been mostly bad. I mean, he he does throw the ball down the field. I think some of this was earlier in the year, like you were mentioning. Um, ripped the ball down the field at a pretty high rate, seventh right. highest rate of twenty plus air yard attempts in the NFL. But then he's completed his adjusted completion percentage is thirtieth in yeah. the league, just thirty three percent of this. So he's ripping it and not completing a lot. He's right. super inefficient. Um, the, he takes a long time to throw. His average time to throw mm-hmm. is 31st in the NFL. He can run around and do stuff out of structure, but he can also run himself into sacks. He's very erratic. He has 13 turnover-worthy throws this season. That's tied yeah. for 31st in the NFL as well. So there's a lot of question marks and not a lot of big-time throws on the tape with Taylor Heineke, but he's, we know he's one of those guys that can just, boom, he's on a hot streak, and all of a sudden he's ripping the ball over the yard. and. Right. You know, it's it's he he feeds off that energy from his he own does. performance, basically, and kind of right. elevates him. He can't maintain it, but if you're making mistakes, he can stick his his team can stick around on you. Exactly, and if you go back to the Saints game before Jameis Winston got hurt, right? He he had some scrambles, especially up the middle. They didn't contain uh, on, enough on the outside. We saw that even Trevor uh, Simeon got a, a couple of runs on the outside, not for a whole bunch of yards, but. The, the gap integrity on their rush lanes in the middle of the defense opened yeah. up and allowed Jameis Winston to pick up some some first downs with his legs before he got hurt. If you go back to that playoff game against Washington, Heineke was the, the leading rusher mm-hmm. for Washington. Six carries, 46 yards, 7.7 yard average, and a touchdown, kind of a hero play where he did for the pylon and kept Washington in that game. And you got to remember, um, you know, at, at halftime, it was 18 to 7 Tampa Bay, but then Washington scored nine points in the third quarter to make it 19 16. And it, yeah. it was it was that 13 yeah. to 7 Buccaneer outscoring Washington in the fourth quarter that, that, that really put Tampa Bay over the edge. Oh, but yeah. Heineke was scrappy enough 306 yards passing, a touchdown, a, and a pick. Got sacked a couple times, but you're right. He's the type of player that. If you give him a running lane, he is going to try to run, and and he'll he'll try to move the chains with his legs. We saw that a lot at, at Denver, in uh, in Washington's last game. Right. I know I'm bouncing back to the Bucks having the ball here, but let's just the most important thing about this game since we're talking quarterbacks, Taylor Heineke coming out game against the Bucks last year in the playoffs. I get it, but Tom Brady was the best player on the field when those two teams. Played oh last yeah, year. and no that doubt. was why the Bucks overcame. The, all their defensive miscues, all the drops on offense. I think they had seven or eight drops that yes. day on offense. Brady was unbelievable. I mean, it was might have been his best game as a buck production wise. It would probably look like his best game as a buck if they had the rest of the crew had caught the balls off as yeah. they should. It, he, he, only he was unbelievable. He completed 22 of 40 passes because, yes. you know, like, about, it, about a third of drops, those were I'm, dropped. Yeah. yeah. Like it was, yeah. it was an incredible performance. He right. put the ball in them. I mean, a couple touchdowns they had dropped yeah. in that game. I mean, that only reason that was 381 was yards. Bad. Yeah. So, and honestly, it was probably one Ali Marpet's worst game. You know, Jonathan Allen game was a tough matchup for him, and that'll yeah. be a tough one to watch as well. They don't have as, as much around him as they did maybe a year ago, but um, that's going to be a one to watch. But that's the important thing to think yeah. about here. When I talk about, I don't, you know, even with these injuries and some people have listed them, you know, I, I don't, I mean, Tom Brady's still the quarterback, man. Like, right. Tom Brady's made it work with worse weapons. I'm not saying every game they could win, but. Right. Some of the games that they might need to win without if Chris Godwin doesn't play. Now, some people are asking, you know, Chris Godwin having uh, this. Here's a good question from Tim. He says, Chris Godwin having weird lower body, inj- body injuries each of the last three seasons. Would you reconsider a long term deal with him with those in mind? Absolutely not. We'll see what happens with these. We don't even know if Godwin's going to miss a game. Let's let's right. say that. Right. First of all, like, we don't even know if he'll miss any games. So we yeah. got to preface that you know i know david says no ab no godwin no gronk no davis no smb not good we actually think smb probably will play we'll see we don't know about gronk we'll probably know about ab he's not going to play we don't know about godwin we'll see so let's just not jump the gun too much but in terms of godwin yeah, yeah it's my nagging injuries minor injuries that have no long-term effects are not a concern for me as long right. as he's getting a clean bill off. he hasn't had any major injuries that's 
the important thing. The other stuff's annoying, but there's no – it's not predictive for the future at all yeah. in terms of injuries. Like it's not like his body right. is worse. And, and listen, th- as long as they got Tom Brady, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, I would dare say they could probably win with Blaine Gabbert quarterback <laughs> this week. You notice how I took out all there. the pictures out of the out of the overlay here on StreamYard, but Except I left Blaine, the Gabbert yeah. picture because I knew you'd want to use it. <laughs> it's a staple, John. It's a staple in the Peter Report podcast. They just need to get him in for a play, and they, they're assured it's victory. The formula. They, every time – the Buccaneers win. It's it's because Blaine Gabbard played. Yeah. It's not rocket science, man. That's right. He needs to be in there. So I feel good about them offensively in this game, even with some injuries. But yeah. yes, it'll be tougher for sure. Defensively, here's the thing, Scott. Yeah. Washington's offensive line has not uh, been yeah. the strength of the team, like maybe in the past that it has been. Charles Leno starting a left tackle right. has had a little bit of a rough go of it. They've always been a little bit questionable in the interior outside of center. Chase Roulier has played well, uh, but he's he is really in well. reserve. Yeah, yeah. he's maybe right. been their best guy and he's on injured reserve. Brandon Scherf has been a good right guard, but he's hardly ever out there. Yep. He's been injured. He is uh, limited today in practice. And then the right tackle, Sam Cosme, the rookie, who's also been pretty solid, was yep. limited as well. It's been and a very his, good run blocker. Yeah. And his backup, Sadiq Charles, is out with COVID. He's on the COVID yep. list. So we'll see what Cosme can do. They, today, both Cosme and Scherf, the right side of their line was limited. So as long as I think they they can not take any steps back, they should play. They might not be 100%, but their center's out. They've always had – they have issues at left guard. That's their weak spot. Left tackle, Leno has not played great either. That complicates things, especially if Scherf and Cosme are actually limited in games and not up to their ability. And the Bucs' defensive line needs to take advantage because that's the biggest unit I'm watching coming out of the bye, Scott, is how good the pass rush is in terms of individual one-on-ones and also in terms of – got to win their one-on-ones. They've got to do that. And we we need to see more sack production from Vita Vea. He's got the ability to win some one-on-ones. Yeah. And sometimes it's not just driving the center back to the quarterback's lap. It's shedding the center and getting to the quarterback and getting that – that guy down and and you know Tyler Han- Heineke he's he's a moving target right mm-hmm. Tyler Larson is the, he's the new center he's a journeyman 6'4 335 he's not some 300 pound guy that, that is he related to Ted I don't I have to think look so. that up I don't know if they're related yeah Ted was with so. the Bucks. Ted gave up two sacks I think last year in that yeah because he stepped in for Capo wasn't it Kappa yeah he, got hurt? he did and um yeah. uh Deron Payne got both of those sacks yeah. So, yeah, it yeah, was Ted Larson that got ragdolled in that game. And then, By a guy and, who can't even rush the pass are not great. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but yeah, so that, that this should be a game where Todd Bowles, if I'm Todd Bowles, I'm playing zone and I'm I'm dropping seven and I'm rushing yeah. four a lot this game because I, I, I think that what that's going to do is that's going to limit the running alleys from Tyler Heineke, who's, you know, who can hurt you. Um, with with you know by extending plays with the mm-hmm. speed, whether it's yep. a scramble or whether it's just rolling around playing some some sandlot football, trying to hit McLaurin deep. So yep. I, I I think they can get home with four. This is going to be a game where JPP, if he's playing a lot, it's going to have he's going to have to step up and he's going to have to get to the quarterback. He's got two and a half sacks this year. I know he's been hurt, but if he can't do it, then put JTS out there and have him do it. Shaq Barrett, this is also. A hero game. This is this is a two sack game for Shaq Barrett. He's got to really step up and and continue his trajectory of, of getting double digit sacks this year. And and um and I I, yeah. I I think that's I think that's money in the bank this week, especially mm-hmm. with the emphasis being on you know on the the pass rush. And speaking of money in the bank, if if you're if you're gonna put money in a bank, that's fine, but you're not gonna get much interest. You should do what I do and uh, and give a lot of your your fundage to Amuni Financial and help have them help with your retirement accounts by getting some big interest on your investments. At Amuni Financial, we help you live in the now. We do. Congratulations. We do. We're so happy Thank for you. Thank you. Thank you. And even though the now may feel very different, you still need to plan for the future. How's retirement treating you? Oh, just fantastic. I know I say it all the time, but you really got to come up to Colorado. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. We can help you develop that plan to keep you on track so you can still prepare for tomorrow today aim uni financial plan ahead stay ahead go to colorado damn it do it managing your family's wealth means more to immunity financial than simply allocating your assets it means legacy planning brokerage and advisory services retirement accounts college savings accounts for your kids and insurance services with over 40 years of experience in the tampa bay area do what i did 
Let Immuni Financial help you plan ahead and stay ahead with your finances. Call Immuni Financial, 1-800-868-6864. That's 1-800-868-6864 or visit immuni.com. Good stuff there, Scott. Okay, let's uh, look at this matchup from that layer we were talking about with the pass rush. I think it's a big deal in this game because, as I mentioned, Taylor Taylor Heineke. I, by the way, I love that you've called him Tyler the whole show because it, I Tyler, know you're, Taylor. It didn't matter. That's what I was going to say. I love it because it just feels like I it just, doesn't even matter. Yeah, it, but it's just what, whatever your name. Is. <laughs> we, 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 yeah, you, you're you're the the Ryan Fitzpatrick replacement. Got it. Okay. That's right. Yeah, whatever your name is. Um, but yeah, this is a Washington uh, offense that has struggled in situational football this year, just like their defense in some ways. Defense just kind of been bad across the board. They've actually moved the football okay on offense for Washington, but they are 25th in points per game because they're 31st in red zone offense, only converting red zone trips to touchdowns 46% of the time. That's horrible. The Bucs are seventh in the NFL, not even the best, and they're 68%, which in most years before the last three years when red zone offense has gone through the roof in terms of efficiency, 68% what the Bucs are at this year would have been like easily tops in the league. Yeah. In an area in an era of the last three years, four years, five years where red zone offense is spiking in terms of efficiency yeah. and percentages of finishing because play calling's improved. The red, Washington is just completely the other direction. 46% 31st in the NFL, same thing third downs, 34.7% of the time on third down, they convert 27th percent of the time. So they have just really struggled in situational football, Scott, um, for a lot of reasons probably, but that usually, I mean, the, why the Bucks are so good in situational yeah. football and every, you know, both years Tom Brady's been here, it's big on the quarterback. Quarterback in situational football, third downs, red zone, you see, you know, kind of the desperation looks and the exotic stuff and, how good you are managing those situations has a lot to do with it. And yeah, it's uh it's a big deal. And Matt, we appreciate the five dollar super yeah. chat. His name is Taylor, not Tyler. Thanks, yeah. Matt. Well, I, I I'll say this. You know, I, I I know that that there used to be, John, and, and you watching Ben Roethlisberger all those years, you know, Jameis Winston, Josh Freeman down here. It, it, it used to be pre a prerequisite. You had to be Six four, six five. You know, to be that that guy to see over the line of scrimmage. Then you've got this this influx of quarterbacks, the Kyler Murrays, the Baker Mayfields that have, you know, that have have uh, come into the league recently, and and it's guys like Russell Wilson and Drew Brees that have kind of paved the way. And if you look at Tristan Heineke, you know, he's six one, two ten. You know, yeah, and man. he's not a big guy. And I think part of the reason why why you know he's got to hang on to the ball. So long is is if, unless that throwing lane is scripted open for him, it's it's literally looking around. It's getting outside the pocket to find those guys right. down the field, and and that that's a you can be six one and be successful at quarterback in the NFL, but yeah. it's rare still. Like you have to have a, a big time skill set to be able to do that, and and it to to function and structure from the pocket like Drew Brees that was remarkable. For guys like Russell Wilson, you know, he's got to get outside the pocket. Kyler Murray, the same thing to be able to see over the line of scrimmage sometimes mm-hmm. and, and get those. And I think with Trevor Heineke, it's a thing where he's probably not um, adept yeah. at that. I don't know that, right. that that Tristan's got enough time in the NFL to where he's he's been successful that way. Right. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. When, when, when Theodore Heineke gets back there, I think the biggest thing for him is just going to be able to, can he survey his options? Does he have that kind of time? And if he doesn't, yeah. how successful is he going to be? Because that's not a, that's not really what he's been in the NFL. He's not been a guy that wins from the pocket consistently and yeah. makes plays down the field and makes plays into tight windows all the time. You know, there's erratic instances of that. Um, right. But I think those are really few and far between for him. So I think that's going to have to be kind of where, you know, things basically improve um, for um, for Tyler. So here's here's the thing. We've got a couple people calling out in the chat. You just called him Tyler. It's it's oh. not Tyler. It's Tristan. Oh, sorry. Tr- Tr- Trevor. Sorry. Whatever. Ted. Yes. Teddy. Ted. Teddy. Teddy. Yeah. Teddy Haneke. Yeah. Long lost glazer says Celsius pin chasers living golf life. My bookie immunity <laughs> financial and manscape still to come. Holy, Holy Adrian's pillows. You should be sending super chats to us. Here's the thing, long lost glazer. 
Uh, you could pay to replace any of those if you'd That's like. Right. Uh, we'll you can uh, we'll give you our email address. The super chat window is now open. That's right. Uh, super chat window is open. Yes, if we receive super chats that match our, our advertising bids, we will have some tough conversations to make. Um, we also have no only three shows this week because there was no game on Sunday. Yeah. That's usually two shows that we do ad reads during. So we're we're packing them in for our sponsors on the show, which gives me the opportunity to shout out our friends over at Underdog Fantasy because. You can get yourself some money in Underdog Fantasy this week. They will double your first deposit if you're a new sign-up, up to $100 with the promo code Pewter. All you have to do is go over to Underdog Fantasy and making an account takes literally like 30 seconds. Put in your deposit, whatever you want to spend, and they'll match it, and they'll give you that money in the same. So you want to put in 50 bucks? Great, they'll give you 50 bucks to play with. And you want to put in 10 bucks? They'll give you 10 bucks to play with. Whatever you want. You want to go up to 100? They'll match 100. You'll have $200 to play with at that point. So here's the thing. They yes, they have all these great best ball leagues and all these these tournaments you can get into. Tons of different sports too. If you're doing something outside of football, but my favorite thing is the player prop bets that they have over under on player stat lines right now for Bucks Washington. Tom Brady, three hundred and six point five yeah. passing yards. That's the only one you can get right now. As you get closer to the game, you'll get a few more player prop bets in there as well. They got to figure out who's playing and who's not in terms of Godwin yeah. and Scotty Miller and some of these guys. But right now, that's the over under for Tom Brady. So depending on how you're feeling, go over. Smash that over under uh, for underdog fantasy. I, yeah, I what, wonder. I wonder what the over under for rushing yards by Tanner Heineke is going to be on Sunday. Well, that's a good question, Scott. I don't know if we. I don't know if we know that or not. I don't think there is anything for Washington right now in terms yeah. of over under. There is not. So, yeah, we've okay. got a we've got a good way to figure out uh, what uh, what I'm trying to think of other names. Uh, yeah, I don't for, can't remember his name now, but whatever his name is, so we got a we got a while to figure out what what's Tyson Tyson what Tyrell's going to do this this uh, yep. week against the the Bucks defense so yep. um yeah that's kind of your breakdown for this game though i think the biggest thing for the Bucks defense is being able to get pass rush if they can do that i don't think Washington anything else Washington wants to do consistently because Washington hasn't they haven't been this great rushing team this season they've been fine yep. running the football i don't think it's going to be enough to carry them to victory especially with how much they give up in the passing game so Heineke's going to have to be great again for that, give them a chance in this game. And if the Bucs are impacting the game in the pass rush and they're finishing and it comes down to Devin White, Scott, Devin White has to be better in the second half of the season. He does. We that need to see us- some splash plays. We need, yeah. we need to see interceptions, forced fumbles, fumble recovery, scoop and scores, sacks. Like if, if you're going to a gap blitz this guy, Todd Bowles, please tell him to wrap up. Please tell him to come in under control. So, um, you know, I, cause I listen, I remember that, that, that sidestep that Mac Jones had, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, th- th- that was, that was a dead on sack, you know? And, uh, you know, if, if you're a more mobile guy, like, like Toby Heineke, I mean, you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're going to make Devin white look foolish. Right. Absolutely. It's, it's a lot of onus on, on Devin white to play better over, uh, the second half of this season. He needs to be the guy that steps up. Taryn says that he needs a Zach in this game. I agree. Yeah. Matthew with a $5 super chat. Be careful, boys. Tristan was FCS Walter Payton Award winner of best O player in the country and was player of the year for state of Georgia in high school. I mean, Great. I agree. Yes. I completely yeah. acknowledge that. I don't think that Thomas Heineke has any of our disrespect. I think we right. know what he's capable of. I think it goes beyond that. I mean, it's just about saying how the Bucs can stop him and all the things they're going to need to do well. Um, to be able to stop him because yeah, you yep. don't you don't see players like Tucker Heineke every single week. So you just need to be really you need to be on it. Uh, that's basically it. So that brings us to our last segment here. That brings us to our last segment, Scott. You know what time it is? It's time for the segment <laughs> what we time didn't, is it, John? It's time for the segment we didn't get to do on Sunday. Oh Game balls God. presented by Manscaped. Here yes. we go. Your balls will thank you. Do it. This is the best time of the week because you get to hear about how you can shave your pubes, which is I know why everybody in the chat shows of up. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in a below-the-waist grooming, want you to shave your pubes with the Tom Brady of ball trimmers. The brand new lawnmower 4.0. Here's what's in the 4.0 package. It comes with the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. Has an unbelievable. Uh, it has LED lights. You can see everything going on down there. Also, it has uh, a travel lock on it, and it's waterproof as well. So extremely there convenient, nice and quiet. It's wonderful. No snags, no anything like that. They've got the crop preserver ball deodorant, the crop reviver toner, the weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, the performance boxer briefs, 
and the shed travel bag. This is the kit. I'm telling you, this is the kit, ladies and gentlemen, yes, that you have been waiting for, or well, mostly gentlemen, and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Pewter20, P-E-W-T-E-R 20 at manscaped.com. You can get that 20% off and get yourself. Yeah, it's a great gift. Great gift to give somebody else. You name it. Send it yeah. to somebody. Say, hey, this is what Listen, I want for the holidays. The holiday season is, is here. I mean, Black mm-hmm. Friday is going to be here before you know it. We're going to be locked into the gift-giving holiday season. Uh, treat yourself or the dude in your your life, your dad, your uncle, your bro, your college roommate, your next-door neighbor, anybody that you think needs their pubes trimmed. Get them manscaped, yeah. and uh, they will thank you. And, John, should I give them a free T-shirt, too? Should I just you should. It? Yep, yep. Okay, fine. Absolutely. We got these awesome Pewter Report T-shirts back in stock. Pewter, black, white. Let me know what you want. It's really simple. All you have to do is go in order using the promo code Pewter20 when you make a, a Manscaped purchase. Then forward me that email. The good news is it has none of your financial information. Don't want it. Don't need it. It does, however, have your address, which I do need to send you the free T-shirt. So whether you gift the shirt as well as the Manscaped stuff to somebody else this holiday season or keep the shirt for yourself, which I would do, the shirt's absolutely free. So just all I need is that forwarded email to sr at pewterreport.com. Super easy. sr, that's me, at pewterreport.com. Let me know what color you want, black, pewter, or white wow and then Color what options. size you need what a xxl day. extra large large medium uh, those great. are the sizes so send that over to me we'll send you the shirt manscape's going to send you all the good stuff that you're going to buy yeah all right so enough about tom brady and timothy heineke now we move to the part of this show where we give our predictions and i'm not going to give give a score because okay. i it, there's too many injuries up in the air right now chris yeah. godwin's an important Piece and all this and okay. and also does Brashad Perryman you know how's, how's it going for him we just got to see we I don't know I'm not ready to give a score yet yeah. I'll give a score in our Friday pewter predictions which are coming out on the site I agree but I am going to say that the Bucks win and it's going to be by double digits I would agree with that I, I also think I've been thinking about it during the show and I, I think they get a defensive score here and I, I believe that that they're going to end up getting 30 in this game. I think they're going to hit the magic number and get used to that, which they need to do, mm-hmm. John, if they're going to be successful on the road to the playoffs, if they're not yeah. going to get home field advantage. They need to do that. So uh, I agree. I think that, that uh, the fighting Tom Brady's are going to beat the, the fighting Trevor Sikama Heineke's uh, 30 to 17. Oh, you're giving a score. Oh, you're, you're yeah, going, Oh, now you're in the thirties. All right. Okay. Yeah, 30 to 17. I think All they're right, going to do let's it. Let's go. I love yeah. it. Uh, Mitch says 40 to 17. Mm-hmm. So he's, okay. He doesn't even know waiting to see if Godwin's in or out. So you can yeah. check out all the Mitch, reports. Mitch, they're not playing at Raymond James Stadium. That's where they yeah. score 40 points per game. That's true. Down on the road. Point. Um, but you can check but out all they'll the, do it. We'll see. Yeah, all the Peter Report predictions from all the Peter Report staff will be up uh, for this game on Friday over uh, with the, the new SRS Fab Five. Yeah, with so the new SRS Fab Five, yeah. which you can check out. If you're looking for content from today, we got tons of that up. I think today is still Wednesday. It's felt like it is. an eternity, but I believe my Bucks <laughs> briefing call went it. up this morning. Uh, so yeah. that somehow happened in this last 12 hours or so. So you can check that out as well on the site. I give my thoughts on Brashad Perryman tomorrow. I'll have something up about my thoughts on Darren Fells. Not to be confused with Daniel Fells, who also played in tight end in the NFL. Um, and uh, yeah, you can uh, check that out and see how I think Darren Fells uh, fits into the equation. Um, yeah, Mitch is calling Scott out if the Bucks score 40. I love it. Um, I, that'd be fine with me. Great stuff. Call me out. Okay. Yep. So before we watch uh, Tobias Heineke take on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we will have a Thursday podcast as well. Paul Atwell yes. and I will be on the Thursday show, and we're going to dive deep on this team. We're going to tell you schematically. We've talked a lot of player stuff, but we're going to talk schematically about the two or three things we need to see the Bucs do better going into the back nine games of their season and how they can accomplish those things, where they can find greater efficiency. And right now the Bucs are playing, in my opinion, as well as when they're not committing penalties right? They're, and they're not dropping the football. And they're yeah, and the refs aren't screwing them over, I should say. Because yeah. by the way, I would like to mention this in the wake of the Steelers clearly getting handed a win. And I say that as a Steeler fan, getting handed a win yeah. the other night on Monday Night Football in embarrassing fashion by the officials. The Bucks are the this is just for the Tom Brady gets every call, which has always been the most absurd. <laughs> it's just right. absurd. Um, the Bucks are the least or the team right now that is benefiting less from penalties than any other team in the league. They have only had 38 penalties. Go against their opponent this season. 
38 in comparison the bucks themselves yeah. have had 59 and by the way they're not even they're not even in the top for penalties anymore because everybody caught up now the bucks had the bye week except so in penalty not- yards even yeah. with the bye week, the Bucks were second yeah, in even with the bye, that's 680 right, that's yards, I believe. Yeah, so. they're terrible in that regard. But yeah, it's not. I mean, this is yeah, this is just not. It's not. It's not looking good for the Bucks right now in terms of what other teams have gotten called against. So the Bucks, they're going. That pendulum's going to swing the other way, and the Bucks are going to get more penalties called, and it's going to start this week against Washington. John, that's outstanding Take analysis. It. Where can I find some more outstanding analysis Sunday during the Bucks game? Well, that would be the Pewter Game Day Show with the ah. Pewter Report staff. This game starts at 1 p.m. I know most people are not used to that because yes. the Bucks have really only had one 1 p.m. game this season. So we'll start the pregame show uh, at about 12 at about noon uh, noon on Sunday. So you could jump in with us for the pregame show. We'll break down this matchup. We'll talk about all the injuries, how that affects the game, and everything on the Pewter pregame show. And then we'll have Pewter Game Day coming shortly after that. So uh, which Paul and I will be with you. Throughout the entirety of the game, breaking everything down, talking players, talking scheme and X's and O's and all that stuff throughout the game. So it'll be good stuff. As always, we appreciate y'all jumping in there. But tomorrow, 4 p.m., uh, Paul and I will be back on the show and we'll be uh, chatting it up, talking Buck scheme for sure. So we appreciate everybody. We appreciate the super chats today. Appreciate everybody jumping in the show uh, and giving us your thoughts and comments as always. Until next time, thanks so much for listening to another edition of the Pewter Report Podcast. Out.